So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another album review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm joined again by Senorita Sabrosura. And uh, we're going to talk about the new Queens of the Stone Age album in Times New Roman that came out last Friday. So first of all, Senorita, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Everything good over here. I I'm good. I'm here. Uh, I'm not on the couch because it's hot. So uh, I said, <laughs> let's let's do this and, and just put the picture of the album. So yeah, this is the this is a band that we both enjoy. So we decided to uh, cover this one together. So this is the band's eighth album, and I think the first one since 2017, where they put out Villains. So uh, we're gonna do like. Um, first, we're going to say what we thought of it when we first listened to it. Then we'll talk about tracks, very conversation-like. And then at the end, we'll give it our final thoughts. So, uh, Senorita, what do you think of, of In Times New Roman? <laughs> well, uh, first, uh, like I was very curious with the teasers. They start posting like some teasers, some parts of, uh, of a few songs and the singles. Uh, some very interesting videos on Instagram. I saw them, and um, and it catch me like, hmm, this sounds very interesting. And whether you love or hate this band, there's no denying that they're like a very unique band, very different, and they capture me. Like I think. I don't even remember the last album that came out. It was like six years ago, you said? Yeah, Billions in 2017. Uh -huh. I don't even remember that album, but this one I immediately catch me and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think their last one was one of my least favorite, but this one, I also enjoyed it. I enjoyed the singles. I think the first single that they put out was, uh, uh, it was a Carnivore. Uh, I'm trying to remember the song title all of a sudden. I can't remember. No, it. I but think it will it was, come to me. Uh, too. Emotion, emotion sickness. sickness. Yeah. yeah. And emotion sickness really reminded me a lot of like uh, if 2007 era Bulgari's album yeah. makes with a little bit of songs from the deaf. Uh, and something that this album to me does well, uh, I compare this album to era Bulgari's with some songs of the deaf and like Clockwork from 2013. Yes. I think it was more of a mellower album. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed it too. I think the singles were strong. I, I wasn't uh, that much of a fan of Villains from 2017. I thought it was too danceable. Uh, but a lot has happened in six years for Josh Homey. Yes. Who obviously is the leader of this band. Uh, he got divorced from Brody Dale from the Distillers. He had like a huge custody battle and he yeah. also was battling cancer. Uh, yes. So a lot of things. And uh, and some of his close friends uh, passed away. Yeah. Like he was like re uh, really close with uh, Mark Lanigan uh, who passed recently. He mm -hmm. Yeah, he was in the band. Uh, he was really close with Anthony Bourdain too. I think they were drinking buddies. And then he, I think he was friends with Taylor Hawkins too. So a I, lot of loss and battles with, for him. I can tell you who's not his friend. <laughs> Who? Team Armstrong from Rancid. <laughs> Well, yes. but I, I know there was like a lot of hype for this album. And I was like curious, like, will will it live up to the hype? Will it deliver? Yeah. So yeah, I I I we see when Squeeze of the Stone Age is about to put out something, I've always enjoyed it. I actually seen the band live. I saw them on Lola Palooza of 2003. And uh, I got to them, I got into the band with songs from Def. For mm -hmm. death and and I've been a fan ever since. But yeah, it's a band that I always thought is interesting. It's hard to categorize because they have they have rock music, they have like alternative grunge to some of their songs. They have psychedelic rock to them. It's Plus, Josh Homme's voice can be, you know, very crooning like sometimes, like uh, 
I try to see who to compare it, but you know, he he's got a, he can sing. So uh and they got some danceability to their tracks too, like in the way that they play the guitar. Yes. So, yeah, it's not a band that you can say like every album sounds the same. No, I think they, they have a distinct, you can tell that it's Queens of the Stone Age, but they're very different. So yeah, uh, I also thought it was very good, but I, I wanted to listen to it a lot to to because it's not an easy album to to review honestly uh because of the the music and and the changes so yeah, even the lyrics are sometimes to me not that easy to decipher so i thought it's it's an album that you have to take your time with it so uh what tracks for you stood out uh well uh we talk about the singles uh that was the first one i i listened emotional sickness i really like i think it's what one of the most radio friendly of the songs uh but it's very catchy it has like some 70s vibe it has some uh like cool hooks so uh that's the first one i listen and i i i like uh what I, I what i like about this album is like it's very energetic and uh, sometimes it seems like a little anxious and angsty but i like the how energetic it is uh and it feels like more raw and angry than the last album well hence what happened to him yeah, of course. And what's happening like uh, uh with this world with uh with life lately, like pandemic, war, fires, storms. <laughs> yeah, plus, no, it's, plus it's, you it's, added that to your personal battles. <laughs> so and uh, another song I really like, it's uh Paper Machete. Oh yeah, that was one of the singles in the second song. Yeah, that's a uh... That's a really good one. I think that one has a like a great guitar hook to it. It's very yeah, uh, and a great solo for me. Uh, and also the lyrics. Uh, he's like very direct. Uh, you know he went to divorce. Uh, he said you speak lion lioness and I'm so in distress distress fluently. And it's it says also does your every single relation end in pain and misery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's very direct yeah I, I can yeah I think everyone like that's been through divorce can can well really well it depends on who you divorce but yeah. it, it depends um it depends, yeah yeah but it's not 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 a nice uh thing to go through it, uh, even the most amicable and and if you both decided to go separate ways, it's still not fun. That is true. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a good one. Uh, another song I like is a negative space. It reminds me sometimes of Chris Cornell voice. Uh, like this song is like more grungy. Uh, I I like the the bass lines. And I like, like, he sometimes, like, remind me of Chris Cornell, but he also used his falsetto voice, like, very unique. Yeah, and the lyrics are very interesting uh, because he's, like, in a negative space. I want to leave it, turn around right as you're leaving. The cruel mistake, I can't believe it. You can trust now that you're not breathing. And, yeah. Uh, and, and there's, yeah. Uh, well, and uh, other songs like Time and Space, uh, Carnival Voyeur, like, I like, I, I felt like he was channeling uh, Bowie or even Iggy Pop, like that crooner voice, uh, like the the electric keys, the strings, and Carnival Voyeur has like uh, some dance beats. Oh. Yeah, and there's a part in Carnaboya where it goes like more like a like a like a like you can see like corner like a like a string arrangement and it goes like really soft like yeah. in the middle part of it. Uh, yeah, it so goes, yeah. I, I felt like in some of the songs on this album he was like channeling uh Bowie. Like if Bowie had like a psychedelic rock band. 
Well, he kind of did, didn't he? Didn't he have like a psychedelic rock band? Well, yes, but but the, the uh, I I mean like the, the Bowie later years that Chrome Boys, uh, but with a psychedelic rock band. <laughs> okay, yeah, and it's interesting. In an interview with N N N M E. Uh, before the album's release, Homie spoke on how life events had influenced the recording of Times New Roman. So I'm going to quote him. He said, I think when you're dealing with extreme ups and downs of life, you don't stop and go, I should really make a record. <laughs> Those things don't exist in the moment. If your roof is floating, you don't say, we should make a record about this. You have to stop yourself drowning in a flood. Uh, we recorded it probably two and a half years ago, but it just sat there waiting to be finished. I didn't sing it until last November. I wasn't done living. Honestly, I was probably afraid. I wasn't ready. You need the flood to be over and then you can decide where you can accept the flood. I think with this being a record about acceptance, you need to actually get here, your, get there yourself. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not all gloomy. There's like an acceptance to it of everything that's happened. Yeah. So it's interesting. Uh, but something because I've, I've read uh, reviews from this and they're like yes the lyrics are important but what makes this album great is the style of music uh, yeah. because you know if it's just lyrics and the music is not that good people are gonna forget it but when you have such great catchy and psychedelic music with the good lyrics i think it makes for a great listen so uh uh yeah you know what track to me was pretty interesting uh, the last one the straight jacket uh, fitting, which is a nine minute song, uh, how they end the album. And that one. That's an um, interesting choice to close the album. That was, was very, I felt like very Jim Morris on the doors on that. Yes, one. yes. Uh, I think everybody can agree. Like he was like challenging uh, Jim Morrison, like when Jim Morrison started to speak in, in a song. Maybe the naked Indian guy came to just show me. <laughs> yes. In the desert. Uh -huh. He said, you must write this album. But yeah, that was interesting. And like at the seven minute mark of that song, it gets like to a very like acoustic, like beautiful and it sells down. So I, I like it. It's it's interesting. And I like the spoken word. And I think Josh Homme has that type of voice where he can do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for me, I I like all songs. There was there was no song like I could skip. Like I enjoy every song. Uh, some other more than others, but but it's not an album like I I I will skip a song. Like it's a good album for me. Uh, I find really interesting what the people say. Yeah, it's supposed to be the people, but he put people because people. I listen to the lyrics. It's more it's more about the people. Yes. And that like, was more danceable. I, I like it like it was more darker, uh like uh very surf rock but dark. Uh I also love the bass in that song. Yeah, it's a good thumping bass and, and it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's it, it's it's you can dance to that song, I thought. And I like the way that he goes like what the people say because See. Because, yeah. yeah, it sounds like people. Uh, mm -hmm. So there has to be a story about that. But yeah, I thought that was interesting as well. Uh, I think uh, the only one that I... Uh, I liked everyone, but I thought... Uh, like, for example, Made to Parade uh, was very psychedelic as well. And I enjoyed a lot of uh, time and place as well. It's it's like a more softer tune. Uh, and Sicily... Is another one that's like a more like a like one of the ballads on the album. So yes, that was good. Uh, yeah, that's another thing about this. I think the the pacing of the album is good because it never gets too slow and it never gets super like it 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 does it has changes to the flow, which I think keep it interesting. Uh, than not having like the like the solid ones like uh, at the beginning and then have like the more slower at the end. I think. It made for a good pacing of the album, in my opinion. Yeah, what I like also is that no song is like another one. Like they're very unique songs, 
So it's interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. So far, I think it's one of the best rock albums of the year so far. Uh, uh, between this one and for me, the Foo Fighters album are are the best two rock albums of the year. Yes, right? and I'm so very pumped because I'm gonna see both of the of these bands uh, on September at Riot Fest. Yeah, Dave Grohl has has played drums with them. Uh, yeah. That. So they're their bodies. So yeah, that that's gonna be a great show. I've yeah, but they play time. different days. I was like, maybe they could play the same day and and be a guest in in each other's sets. But no, they play different days. I think Full Fire is gonna be Friday, and then Queen of the Stone is gonna be Saturday or Sunday. Oh well, well sometimes that shit. But happens, I'm very but... pumped that I'm gonna see them. I've seen both bands, so it's gonna be super good. So I have I haven't seen any of them. Yeah, you're in for a for a treat. They're they're good live. So uh, obviously, when I saw Queens of the Stone it was 2003, and there's 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 a different change in the lineup. Yes, but, yes, yeah. it's been twenty years. <laughs> it's been twenty. It's been twenty. It, it's it been, 20 been twenty years, years, so they have evolved. Yeah, they they have evolved, so it's gonna be different. So. Uh, let's give our final thoughts to the album. So uh, what are your final thoughts on this one? Uh, well, like I said, for me, this is a great, solid album. Uh, it feels very raw and emotional, uh, but it combines like elements of the band's signature uh, with new uh, sonic explorations. So for me, it's perfectly balanced, and I really enjoy it. I have it today on repeat, and I didn't get tired of the of listening to it so it's a great album <laughs> so so how would you rate it uh well i think this is a grower right? for but for now i think maybe an 8.5 yeah i think that's 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 fair to say so yeah for <laughs> me uh yeah this is an album uh they're not a band that is even though they're the rock, I don't think they're super accessible. You know, it's not Foo Fighters. This is, the, <laughs> even Dave Grohl has said that when they play, they're the best band. Uh, there's some there's some weirdness to the, the Queens of the Stone Age and some uniqueness. And I like it because it's a unique band. You can listen to something and you say, yeah, that's Queens of the Stone Age. Exactly. Uh, I think that the lyrics are good. Obviously, uh, Josh Homie has channeled some of his pain into art. But I think what makes this album stand out is the different dynamics of the songs. You know, it's got psychedelic rock. It's got like surf rock. It's got like more alternative grunge yeah. stuff to it. Uh, and it's got great. Uh, I think Josh Homme is quite underrated as a singer. I think he's, yeah. he's got a great he's got a great voice and the, you know, the guitars are great. The bass, everything. Uh, Everything, the production is really good. I think they produced yeah. it on their studio and on Rick Rubin's studio. So uh they they recorded it at Rick Rubin studio and at uh Josh Homie studio. Yeah, but they, they produced the there. album this, themselves. I think the last album was uh uh produced by Mark Ronson. So it sounds like very different. And That's this, I, so I think that helped because they produce it themselves. So they did what they, li they like. Yeah, I think it's it's a return to form. And I think it's their best album scenes. Uh, uh, some people said Era Bulgaris, but I like like Clockwork from 2013 a lot. I love yeah. that album. So I, I would say it's their best one since that one, since like Clockwork. So 10 years. Uh, but I think after like Clockwork, they didn't put anything to Billance in 2017. So, <laughs> you know, they're not a band that puts a lot of like albums consistently. They take their time with it. And yeah, I uh, I would rate it. I think it's a grower as well. Yeah, uh, but it is a great it. comeback. Yeah, it's a great comeback album. I would agree with you with an 8.5. Uh, but like I said earlier, it's one of the best rock albums of the year for me so far. So yeah. uh, we want to know from you people, what did you think of Queens of the Stone Age in Times New Roman? Uh, we want to know what are your favorite tracks? What did you think about lyrics, music, the concept of the record? And if you like the videos that we're putting out, do not forget to give us a like, 
And do not forget to subscribe. We have more content and collaborations on the way. Uh, so yeah. please subscribe to Señorita Sabrosura. Uh, how's the how's the art going? The, the I, it's going good. Uh, oh, I have a new collection that I put out today. Uh, but yeah, we're working working hard. <laughs> awesome. And, and still do, in doing uh the earrings. Nice for we have new designs. Cool. Uh I don't have no merch, so you can buy shit from me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the in the future when I get uh, I'll have some merch. But for now, uh please subscribe. Uh we're clo getting closer to the 800 subscribers. Nice. So, yeah, so uh, hopefully we're still uh, hello to all new couchers. And obviously uh, we have more content on the way and subscribe and support us. Uh, and thank you. You know, if just giving us a like helps with the YouTube algorithm because that makes, you don't have to comment, but if you give us a like and even a dislike, it shows it to more people, so more people can watch the content. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like it, well, if we understand, just give us a thumbs down. But we we, we understand. So, You're even helping. Yeah. So until next time, people. This is Hector, the shield dude on a couch. Señorita Sabrosura. And we'll see you here for another collaboration album review. Thank you, and good night.